The dawn breaks in northeastern France. Here, between the Rhine River and the Vosges Mountains, lies the sunniest region in the country, a patchwork of scenic towns, lolling hills, and ancient vineyards, which produce some of the finest white wines in the world. Caught between Latin and Germanic civilizations for more than 2,000 years, the journey through here is like a walk back through history. This is Alsace. Hi, I'm Michael Fagan. In this episode, we're going to travel over the Vosges Mountains and into the valleys of Alsace to learn about the wonderful white wines of the area, an area that continues to attract wine enthusiasts from around the world. The term gastronomy, the art of food and drink, was first used here in Alsace, and it has developed to such a degree that today, there are more Michelin star rated restaurants here than anywhere else in France. Now it's tempting to think of the region as just a series of villages and towns dotting the countryside. But just a short ride from the wine route lies the home of the European Parliament in Alsace's capital, Strasbourg. Here, one begins to appreciate the Franco-Germanic influences in the people and the architecture. Although the region has been occupied as a German province three times in the last 200 years, the soul of Alsace is French. Just west of Strasbourg lies the famous Route du Vin, originally mapped and planted by the Romans over 2,000 years ago to take advantage of ideal growing conditions. The people of Alsace see themselves as distinct, which is reflected in the gastronomy that is an integral part of their day-to-day -day life. Only the freshest produce and finest ingredients will do. Even in the smallest village, wine and food vendors from traveling markets cater to a discriminating and educated public. Here, People are very knowledgeable, always willing to talk about their favorite subject, wine. The wines of this region share particular qualities of freshness, purity, and fruitiness. These wines are sometimes called the white wines for those who love reds. Rich, complex, enticing. With its long dry seasons and varied soil, Alsace offers up seven distinct wines named for those grapes. Pinot Blanc, Gewürztraminer, Pinot Noir, Riesling, Tokai Pinot Gris, Silvaner, and Muscat. In most wine-producing areas of France, the wines are labeled geographically, and many are made by blending various grape varieties. However, in Alsace, the wines are clearly labeled by the single grape variety from which they were made. But in the early 90s, the Hugel family revived an old traditional style of wine, a blended wine they call Gentil. By the Middle Ages, the Alsatian industry was in full bloom shipping wines as far off as Denmark and England. And today, 
Many of the wineries are family-run and have existed for at least three centuries. Here, in the antique town of Rikwir, the Hugel winery has been producing since the 17th century. Etienne Hugel is a 12th generation member of this long established family winery. And this is actually one of our oldest cellars. This was built in. Hugel makes wines from all seven varietals. We find ourselves in one of the oldest cellars. But we came here to learn about the blend, Gentil. Well, now we're coming to the famous Saint Catherine cask. As you can see she's beautifully, richly decorated. The Hugel winery has the world's oldest oak cask still in use. Dating back to 1715, it's been in the family since the French Revolution. So you're still using this today? Absolutely. Actually, it's full, full of, by coincidence, Gentil. Tell me a little bit about Gentil. So Gentil is actually a, a, an old name that was used until the 1920s that meant blend of noble grapes. And then this tradition of blending grapes slowly disappeared in Alsace, and we had the idea in 1992 to revive that concept of top quality blends. So we came back with the name Gentil, and more or less the old recipe. So it's really a, a, a return to tradition. The area's historical links to Germany are reflected here in the wines. Each region uses the distinctive Rhine-shaped bottle and cultivates some of the same grape varieties. But the wines of Alsace are unique. Our wines are dry wines, aromatic, full of flavor, but dry, so wines to match with food. So obviously a very different style from most German wines, which are made in the sweeter style, which may be better, more enjoyable outside a meal. So first and foremost, Alsace is French, despite our complicated history. The historic town of Rigwir seems to have remained unchanged from the Franco-German wars that have ravaged the countryside over the last few centuries. It remains a popular tourist attraction as much for its spectacular views as for its wines. Down the street in Rigwir is the home of another of Alsace's premier producers, in the 1940s, two families, Dopf and Irion, merged their common interests and became a force in the wine industry. Everything is done by hand. Come on, Michael, I've got something very special to, to show you. We are and the seller of Chateau Riquier, export manager Pascal Chile, showed us one of the company's historic vintages. Riesling, the vintage 1945. Wow, and me without a corkscrew. Among other varietals, Top and Irion make a wonderful Sylvaner. Light and dry, it's a simple wine that matches well with fish and salads. The grape is relatively easy to produce, which in turn makes the wine affordable. And there are some differences in how one drinks a Sylvaner as opposed to the other wines produced in Alsace. To really enjoy a Sylvaner, you need to drink it within one, one year. It's definitely not the type of wine uh, to lay down and, and which will be even better after, you know, a few years. Either you're just taking it by itself or just, you know, sharing a glass of white wines with friends. And it's a great introduction to Alsace wines. Oh, look at this beautiful view here. This is fantastic. And here you've got this wonderful Grand Cru, which is called uh, Schönenbourg. Best Riesling of the world are coming from this side, you see. In the world of French vintage wines, the term Grand Cru is the name given to the most celebrated vineyards. When all the variables come together perfectly, these vineyards produce spectacular results. Each of the 50 designated Grand Cru sites in the Alsace region is renowned for producing wine of the very highest quality. Now that's really quite steep. Does, does everything have to be done by hand? Yeah, everything is picked by hand, of course. This is the Rangen Vineyard. It's one of the steepest and hardest to work vineyards in all of Alsace. 
There was a trend in the 1960s and 70s to move away from these areas to the lowlands, which are easier to work. But it's from these Grand Cru vineyards that you get the best fruit. Fruit that, in the hands of the right winemaker, produce the best wines in the region. But one has to wonder why. Why does the hardest landscape to work produce the finest fruit? At the Zind Humbresh Winery, we consulted an expert. Olivier Humbresh, the winemaker here, uses biodynamics, an organic method of cultivation. What's the advantage of such a steep slope? Well, you expose more, uh, less surface of soil to the sun. So automatically, the soil is able to absorb much more sun energy, warms up much quicker, and helps the, the grapes to, to ripen also. The color of the soil is very dark, mostly made of uh, small rocks, and those also take the energy of the sun during the day and release them slowly during the night, which helps to keep a much warmer microclimate around the vine. But what we also came here to learn about was the legendary Gewürztraminer grape of Alsace. Here, with the right soil compositions and appropriate sunshine, this difficult grape can approach perfection. Gewürztraminer is a tricky grape. Gewürztraminer is good when it's ripe, when you have lots of flavor and a ripe acidity. And you choose a climate which is not too hot. You choose a cool climate, but with sometimes a little peak of heat, like in September, just to finish off the ripening of the, of the Gewürztraminer. This is really something. This is our cellar. With, all the... with Olivier's organic approach in the field, the fermentation process is left to nature to take its course. 2001 vintage. It was racked about two months ago, so it's not completely clear at the moment. But it should be getting there. So it's young wine, just barely finished to ferment, and uh, it has to spend another six months, eight months in the cask to settle down all the... Gewürztraminer is a very aromatic white wine. When it's young, it has tropical aromas with strong rose and jasmine and lychee fruit in its scent. And as it ages, the spiciness comes through with pepper and hints of saffron. Now, given the complexity of its aroma and flavor, Gewürztraminer matches exceptionally well with spicy foods like Thai and Chinese. We have a terroir philosophy. We believe that the ultimate difference the ultimate complexity a wine can have can only come from its soil. In the spring, under the auspices of Saint Urbain, the patron saint of the vine, the livelihood of the people is celebrated with the ritual blessing of the vines. Every generation takes part in the procession that begins on the edge of town and proceeds on foot through the vineyards. The vine has traditionally been at the very heart of the community, not only for the wineries, but for the local farmers who sell their grapes to the cooperatives. This is a tender stage in the season, and everyone offers up prayers for the continuing health of the land and thanks for the bounty of the earth. The village of Equishim, which also dates back to the Middle Ages, is often cited as the cradle of winemaking in Alsace. We came here to learn about the attributes of Pinot Gris, the noble grape that best defines the gastronomic tradition. Voilà pour vous, madame. Les asperges vertes au saumon mariné. Michelin rated, 
The Caveau des Cuisines has been ranked as one of France's top 50 restaurants for its culinary expertise. On vous souhaite un bon appétit. Bon appétit, madame. Bon appétit, monsieur. Pinot Gris is perhaps the most underappreciated of the noble varieties of Alsace, with a versatility in food matching that is second to none. Pinot Gris is a grape which brings a lot of body. Traditional dry Pinot Gris, not too heavy, uh, will be a superb wine for seafood, fish, but Pinot Gris is also a superb wine for white meat. The Léon Bayet Winery, another family business since 1580, is among the most distinguished producers of all types of wine in the region, including Pinot Gris. As I was a kid, I was with my father, and when I was a child, you know, a kid, I started to visit some of the best restaurants in France. Marc Bayet is a 13th generation winemaker, an accomplished chef in his own right, and president of several gastronomic associations, and an authority on Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris is a grape which, when you go to a too warm climate, it loses too much his acidity and his freshness. Here, uh, we keep the balance of acidity because the climate is different, because we have cool nights and a long summer, and we have full maturity and good balance. And that's why the Pinot Gris of Alsace is unique. I'm sure you'll discover something because it's quite unique here in Alsace. You know. Although white wines can generally be drunk shortly after bottling, in Alsace, portions of the best vintages are often held back. Mark believes that his best vintages to drink today are from the 1934, the 1945, and 1947 vintage. Mark, this is really unique for Alsace, isn't it? Well, yes. Uh, you know, deep cellars in Alsace doesn't exist out of this one. In fact, they were, it was built by brewers, not by the wine people, you know. Right. The, by the brewers. breweries built that cellar to uh, store natural ice in the winter time and to get ice all over the year. 71, that was a great year. Some of the best dry givats we ever made here. 86, that's 86. the year I was married. <laughs> <laughs> this mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. And this was digged in clay, as you may see here. You know, and clay is really the best for a cellar like that because it keeps very high humidity. And it's humidity. The, it's the uh, roots you see growing through. Yeah, you see even these little roots coming out of the ceiling here comes from the vineyard, the vines which are planted uh, 10 meters higher, you oh, know. Huh? The vineyards deep. above have nurtured the Bayet family for over 400 years. And Marc Bayet is passionate about his wine and the gastronomy to which he's dedicated his life. Believing that. Dry white wine. That's the expression of Alsace. There are times when a sense of the occasion calls for a little bubbling. One of the most popular drinks in the region is the sparkling jewel of Alsace. Raymond d'Alsace. Bernard Spa is the ninth generation producer for Domaine Pierre Spa Rifis, which has been making wine in the quaint small town of Siegelsheim since 1680. What's the process to make good sparkling wine? Well, number one, quality of the grapes, no doubt, where you look for high acidity, some fruit, but not too much fruit. Pressing process. We only take during the pressing process the middle of the juice, where it's, that is the best juice. We call this the head of the cuvee. And afterwards, of course, a very nice smooth fermentation under low temperature control. We do the blend, blend very important, the different grapes, which will be blend, let's say, uh, during the winter, or early spring. And then the second fermentation into the bowl. Cremant d'Alsace made in the champagne method, is blended only with grapes from the region. Here in Europe, in the old world, we enjoy bubbles every time, any time, for any occasion. We don't need even a specific occasion to, to drink a bottle of sparkling wine. Cremant is so refreshing, so fruity, so easy to drink and to enjoy sip by sip that there is no specific time or event to enjoy it.
Sophisticated equipment and rigorous fruit selection has allowed Spar to consistently craft distinctive sparkling wine. Cremant d'Alsace is perhaps the most overlooked quality sparkling wine in the world. Alsace wines are famous for the great, great uh, way of matching with different style of food. Worldwide food it could be Asian, Asian fusion, French, Italian. Here is a dish, originally from Alsace, that tends to exemplify all that is graceful and stylish about French cuisine. Le foie gradois. Which most naturally is served for two, with a carafe of white wine from the region. And for heartier appetites, there is of course Alsace's traditional dish, chocroute. This is a meeting of the Confrérie Saint-Étienne, or the Brotherhood of Saint Stephen, an organization of winemakers dedicated to the promotion of Alsace wine and cuisine. Meetings are held on a monthly basis to evaluate new wines produced by the membership for inclusion into the Confrérie's cellar, which is held to be quite an honor. The Confrérie was founded in the 14th century, its objective being to make Alsace wines better known and more widely appreciated. The cellars are filled with history of past glories, each of which is carefully noted within official journals. And other ancient customs also persist. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever, voici le Grand Conseil. Fermez les yeux, alors là commence le grand moment. C'est la communion, c'est extraordinaire. Vous allez de l'autre côté de la rive, à la rencontre de l'âme du vin. When the people are here and eating, they discover combinations that are astonishing, which most of the people wouldn't imagine even. Today, the Confrérie influences the entire gastronomy of Alsace, encouraging and reviewing experimentation and celebrating their successes. And on evenings like this, even the descent into the wine cellar is performed with ceremony. So in this cellar, we keep more of the older wines, leftovers from the chapters, like this, uh, 98. The oldest wine of the collection is a wine of uh, 1837. 1837? Yes. Fantastic but only the Grand Master is allowed to decide if one of these bottles can be opened. How can I become Grand Master? <laughs> it's a long trip. <laughs> Our journey through the Vinelands of Alsace is coming to an end. There's just one more stop to make. We have yet to discover the majesty of the Riesling grape, which is perhaps the pinnacle of Alsace wine. The Trimbach Winery, established in 1626, is located in the town of Ribovile. Low yields and the use of old vines gives Trimbach wines complexity and depth. Trimbach's range is extensive, but the firm is best known for its stellar Rieslings, and Jean Trimbach, another 12th generation member of the family winery, may be their biggest fan. Son, son, son. 
There what? is no other way. Now this looks like a really old vine, old gnarly. Is, is, that, a, is that a good thing? A great wine starts in the vineyard, and the older the vines, the better the wine. So we get better concentration, better flavor, better um, dry extract, better minerality. That's all uh, about complexity of the wine. We know that these vines give us wine that can age easily 20 years. That's amazing. Trimbox Rieslings are held back from sale for at least three years. And in the case of their premium label, Frederic Emil, the absolute minimum is five years. The reward for this extra effort gives them a chance to develop and mature with palatable results. Lots of depth, lots of fruitiness, layers of fruit, complexity, and long finish. Very long finish. But it still has that backbone of acidity that... This is the Trimbach style. This is the signature of my brother Pierre. And it was the signature of our father Bernard. When you talk about the best in Alsace, we all have a different style. That's us. Focused, bright, pure, clean, perfect for food. What would you serve with this style of wine? Oh, I could see uh, a, beautiful, a beautiful piece of fish here. So anything from sea bass to John Dory to salmon and also white meat go very well with Riesling. Because Riesling has everything in terms of fruitiness, in terms of acidity, structure. It can handle a lot of food. I don't think a lot of people realize just how, how rich and delicious Riesling can be. Again, thanks to our climate. We can produce wine that are fantastic with food. Wine which all reach 12 to 14 percent natural alcohol. Very, very few people in the rest of the world grow grapes like we grow them in Alsace. So we are unique. So see, Michael, where uh, we are here. The Trimbach family considers themselves the guardians of the traditional Alsace style. We want to preserve the freshness, the fruitiness, the aromas into the bottle, and this is all what Alsace is about. It was a glass of Alsace wine more than 20 years ago that inspired me to learn more about this region. And as we've seen, wine in Alsace has a long history and one that is well linked to fine foods. The wines of Alsace integrate the traditions of years gone by in a style that is sure to please wine lovers and gourmands alike. If you have comments on this program or ideas for future episodes, write to us. Our email address is discover at lcbo.com. <laughs>